Hey guys, so if you're looking to add different textures to your 3D models for 3D printing, I've got some pretty good news for you. So Autodesk Fusion's latest July update has added a new feature called Mesh Texture Extrude. So with this feature, an image can be used to generate a textured surface on a mesh body. You can customize your texture extrusion by choosing the extrusion type, clearance from edges, blend distances, and more in this new dialog. So before I would have to create a sketch manually, whatever pattern I want, and then I would have to project to the 3D surface and then emboss or extrude the different features to get something like that. So with this, all you need is an image. You can, it can be a screenshot, a JPEG, or PNG, but preferably black and white or grayscale. So you can just find a random pattern on Google. I'm gonna demonstrate a few different ones as well as a random pattern I created with ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and create a model real quick. So I'm going to do a center point slot. I'm going to extrude this up. And so this feature currently only works with mesh bodies. So that's like STLs. So it'll work with anything from a 3D printer repository site like Thingiverse, Printables, or Maker World, or you can just create the model in Fusion and then export as you normally would into uh, an STL. Or if you want to save time so you don't have to reopen it, you can just go to Mesh, Create, and Tessellate. So go ahead and click the, the model, change the refinement to high, and this maximum edge length is important here. So go ahead and click the preview. So when it looks like that, you're not going to get good results with this new feature. So you, the smaller this is, the more your triangle count increases. But I found that 0 0.01 works pretty good. Now depending on your model or complexity, it's going to take longer to compute. But that's 953,000 triangles. So go ahead and click OK. Now we have our face groups. So you want to go to modify, direct edit, click the body you want to direct edit, click OK, and now you'll find the texture extrude under the modify drop down. So click texture extrude, change this selection filter to face group. I don't know why it's not working there. Let's try it. There you go. Image. Insert from computer, let's just try texture one. Click OK. I like to look at it from the top. And here's where you can scale it, move it around wherever you want. So let's just go ahead and scale that up. So the extrude distance is how deep it's going to extrude the pattern. So I just have it at 0 0.05. And the offset is the offset from the edge. So you can have zero offset if you just want to texture the whole thing, or I've I've been playing around with the offset and I like it. So click OK. So now we have our textured surface. And it's funny, you can actually see this screenshot happen to have a watermark on it. So just keep that in mind. If you do grab a pattern from Google, make sure it doesn't have a watermark on it. And from here, we could go finish, go to utilities go to make 3D print and then open it directly in whatever slicer that you use and then you can use that for 3D printing so let's go ahead and try my other textures so let's back it up modify texture extrude change the selection filter to face group Fusion's usually pretty good about leaving your last selection but uh, for this new feature it hasn't quite been working like that. So let's try texture 2. Go to the top. Let's scale that. Click OK. Cool. I like that one better. That one also looks like it has a watermark on it. Let's try number 3. Modify texture extrude. Selection filter to face groups click the face, image, insert from computer, and texture 3. This is a random chat GPT pattern. I'm 
sure you could pump out some more interesting patterns than this. But it's pretty neat that you can whip up a texture like that. So let's go ahead and try one more. Texture extrude, selection filter, face group, click the face, click the image, and let's do number four. Okay, look at it from the top. Let's scale that up. Click OK. Pretty cool. I think that one's probably my favorite. Now I'm going to show you, you can do it on curved surfaces as well. So let's just back that up. Modify. Texture extrude. Click, oop, wrong order here. Click the face group. And let's go ahead and click multiple face groups. And now I'm going to select an image. I'm going to do texture 4. And let's scale this up. I don't know how large you have to scale this to make it wrap the, the full length, but let's try this. Click OK. Taking longer than normal here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It didn't do what I expected it to do. It kind of stretched it on the, the straights, but uh, that's pretty interesting. You can make a pretty cool like plant pot like that. But let's go ahead and make a regular cylinder to see what that kind of texture looks like. So I'm just going to go to new. I'm going to create a new sketch here. I'm going to just create a cylinder. And let's go to mesh, create, tessellate, click this, go to high, change this maximum edge length to 0.01. Oops, 0 0.01, and then click OK. All right, now we're going to go to Modify, Direct Edit, click the body to edit, click OK, go to Modify, Texture Extrude. Now change the selection filter to face groups, and let's just click this curved surface here, Insert from Computer, Texture 4. Let's look at it from the side. And then let's make this larger and click OK. OK. So it's still a little funky there. So I'm sure they'll make improvements. This was just released in July. But uh, pretty cool. Hope you guys liked the video and uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you liked it, give me a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this. See you guys. Bye.